This woman is lying in the bath. The man next to her unscrews a large vat of sulfuric acid and pours it all down. Then, he unscrewed another vat. A desperate eye peeps out of it. This is a place where life is as low as an ant. This is the hell you don't know. The dark web. A girl is asleep late at night. A strange man enters through the window. And the horror is that he's not here to steal. He came to see if the goods were in good condition. Before he leaves, he even smiles at the camera. The footage. All from a computer found by the hero. Gaius. During the day, Gaius finds a computer. He tries a few random passwords and it turns on with no problem. He immediately tells his girlfriend the good news. His girlfriend is deaf and mute. The two of them can only speak sign language to make communication easier. Gaius was about to show off the software he had developed. The computer suddenly crashed when a message keeps coming from the top right corner of the computer. He opens it up to see a beautiful woman with a hot body. She wants to meet with the original owner of the computer. But before Gaius can finish reading it, there's a video invitation from his friends. They wanted to play a game together. The participants were Jerry, Alan, Kate and a couple of lesbians. But before the game could start, Gaius's computer was stuck again. Gaius was puzzled. After reconnecting, he went to Alan the techie for help. Alan said the hard drive must be full. Gaius looked and didn't find anything. But when he looked, he found a hidden folder. It was 960 gigabytes in size. When he opened it up, it was full of videos. All of them were surveillance and personal videos from people's homes. And that's when Tom, the original owner of the computer, came to him. He was bombarding it with messages from a girl's account. He told Gaius to return the computer quickly because the computer kept lagging. Gaius thought there was something wrong with the computer. So he said I'd put it back where I found it. But just as he was about to leave the house, another stranger sent a message. He said he liked the last video. I'd like to see something different this time. The money will be credited to your account later. Gaius was curious and asked what kind of video he wanted. But the other man replied discreetly that he would talk on the dark river. Gaius didn't understand. But on a hunch, he opened the hidden folder. And there it was, the Dark River software, when he entered the web page. The interface was a small boat moving slowly. It looked very spooky. Gaius then shared the screen in the chat room. Jerry recognized it immediately and said it was the dark web, the illegal part of the internet. It's full of all sorts of shady dealings. Gaius casually opened his account and saw there were millions of dollars in virtual currency. Before he could be surprised, a message came from a stranger. He asked that this time the video consisted of drilling a hole in the victim's head and filling it with live animals. If the person is still alive at the end, he will double the payment. We couldn't imagine how shady the person who sent this message was. Friends quickly suggested that Gaius should turn off the dark river. After calming down a bit, everyone started to wonder about the video in the folder. It was horrible. If you're watching the video at the moment, you could be being watched by someone else. Don't think this is a joke. Once you understand the horrors of the dark web, you'll know that this is no alarmist talk. A woman is held in chains. She struggles but can't drink the water on the floor. The second video shows a woman being dazed in a pool. A vat of acid is poured over her in an instant. There's no time to hear the screams of pain. A third video emerges. A woman trapped in a barrel. Her eyes are full of despair. Needless to say, her fate is also in the hands of others. And these are the videos recorded on the dark web. The size of the disc lets us know that these are just the tip of the iceberg. Gaius suppressed his fear. He clicked on the most recent video. The man in black sneaks into the girl's room. He smiles at the camera with a saintly smile, for the girl is intact. Soon she would be the next item in the trade. That's when his girlfriend's phone call brings Gaius back to the present again. When he gets it, it's his girlfriend's roommate. Turns out the roommate hadn't seen his girlfriend when she got home. She only heard Gaius' voice and came up to explain. But suddenly the screen went black. Okay hello are you there? I can hear you are you still here? I can see you. And that's how her roommate was kidnapped. And the kidnapper was Tom, the original owner of the computer. Because he didn't wait for Gaius to return the computer. He found his girlfriend's house based on the IP address. Tom threatened Gaius to send his girlfriend to you. I will follow her until you return the computer. In the meantime, if your friends go offline or call the police, I'll kill your girlfriend. So don't try anything bad. I'll also be watching your every move through the screen cam. 
After the video ends, Gaius pretended to be calm and continued talking to his friends. One friend goes out to make a phone call. Other friends see the video and yell for the police. Gaius was trying to protect his girlfriend. He had to lie and say it was all a game. The crowd was barely persuaded, but they still asked a lot of questions. For example, how did the video come about? What would happen if the money was transferred? This alerted Gaius. He hurriedly clicked on the account link. He also signed up for an account. He transferred all of Tom's virtual money to himself. This method really scared Tom out of his wits. He claimed that such a large transaction would be considered a mutiny. Either he or Gaius could be hunted down and killed. At this point, the screen also lit up. They were forcibly pulled into the dark river. The administrator asks for their identities. Gaius was able to escape with Tom's guidance. But when Gaius returned to the chat room, the friends were nervous. Because the girl at the end of the video was real and missing. Just as everyone insisted on calling the police, the chat room was suddenly flooded with strangers. No one could kick them out. One of them sent a video. It was the friend who had just gone to the phone. He was standing on the rooftop. Suddenly a man in black appears and pushes him down the stairs. It was clear that they were being watched by the dark web. The friends get more anxious. Is this a game too? That's when Gaius notices that his girlfriend is on the underground with no message. This also meant that Tom had no signal either. And while that was happening, Gaius told the truth. Lara's girlfriend had volunteered. She was going to sneak out and pick up Gaius' girlfriend. The others continued to act as if nothing had happened. Just when they thought everything was going well, a stranger enters the chat room. He spliced and edited the video Jerry had posted online into a counterterrorism quote. Then he called 911. Promise me you'll stay away from friends like this. Man who took someone else's computer accidentally discovered a shocking secret on the dark web. Not only was he targeted himself, not only was he being targeted, but his friends were being targeted as well. That's when there was a knock on his friend Jerry's door. Everyone rushed to stop him from answering the door, but Jerry doesn't believe it. He takes off his headphones to see who it is. The stranger who had broken into the chat room made his move. He played a sound effect of a gun being loaded off Jerry's computer. The police thought someone was resisting and shot Jerry to death. Too late to grieve. Something else happens on Lara's friend's side. The lights in the house suddenly went black. Two videos peeked out of the chat room. One of her girlfriend. One is her girlfriend and the other is her mother who is seriously ill. She is asked to choose between them. Lara can't decide. Instead, the dark web began a countdown. In the end, her mother is taken off her oxygen and her girlfriend was thrown into orbit. Even she can't escape the dark web. Only two of the six who started out are now left. Gaius is desperate to get out of the house. He's going to save his girlfriend. Staying in the chat room, Alan decided to take on the dark web. He says I downloaded all the evidence and coordinates. I'm going to go to the police and expose you. However, the dark net was in no hurry. Instead, he opened his PS software. He took the face of the man who had infiltrated the girl's room and made it look like Gaius' face. He also took the missing girl into Gaius' room. Alan was stunned. He rushed to call Gaius. He wanted to tell Gaius that it was all a trap. He wanted to tell Gaius that it was all a trap so that they could take the blame. But before Gaius could hear what he was saying, Alan was killed by the infiltrator and disguised as a suicide by hanging. Not only that, Alan's computer started editing itself. On the screen was a fake confession. All sins become theirs to commit. Meanwhile, the girl in Gaius' room woke up, but she soon lost her breath again. Gaius saw it all live. His hopes were instantly dashed. There was still a vote on the screen to decide whether Gaius would live or die. And the final result was predictably 9 to 1. A car sped past. And that's how Gaius dies. There's nothing spooky or haunted about the whole film. The horror is breathtaking. Humanity is revealed in an unforgiving way. It's unsettling. At the end of the episode, nearly 30,000 dark web users play a game and vote on whether the protagonist should live or die. Where are these 30,000 people? What are their legal and hypocritical identities in real life? With the development of the internet, is it really possible for people with high-level technology to commit crimes like ghosts? And how should they be regulated? Do you have an opinion?